Okay, we are here in uh, downtown Honolulu, where uh, there's been a extension of the Financial Fridays uh, Occupy, Deoccupy Honolulu uh, encampment uh, since last night. They stayed the night. And we'll find out a little bit about what's going on here. I noticed the police just arrived. Says taxpayers gave 135 million and lost 61 million. What this means is that Central Pacific Bank, during the bank bailout, uh, got 135 million on a phone call from Danny Noe. They just sold back the stock at a 61 million dollar loss, which is uh, tragic. Would you consider? the mortgages of homeowners that are getting foreclosed. So maybe we'll go talk to some of the people here. It's a pretty cool little logo. And the officer is... Police arrived. Uh, there's one policeman. The uh, security told the people here that um, so, 1 p.m. Uh, that they would call the police. We don't know what the charge would be. Since Bill 54 is not a criminal ordinance, uh, police don't enforce it or have to be accompanied by city uh, maintenance personnel. Loitering is a nighttime uh they they took off. Well let's go interview the security officer and found out what the officer voted. Yeah, that's that's good to do that. I'm shy, but I'm confrontational. I'm a walking contradiction. I'm not a normal person. For the, uh, should be up here. There should be a check-in station. These are locked, so he's not in there. He may have done his rounds to the building because they have to go to certain checkpoints. Right, but right. This There's got to be one station possible. here. And this is one of his checkpoints. So. He's not here right now, but when he comes back, we're sure to find out what he said to HPD and what they told him. There he is, right behind me. Perfect timing. Did you guys um, put him up to the Yeah. Well, I was wondering if you could find another guy to find out what the was or what the officer said to HPD and what the was. And we were under the impression that there was a call at 1 o'clock to have to leave if there was possible. I just wanted to know what the officer said. Why he didn't have to be. Okay. You want the other guy over back? Don't back up here at all. Thank you very much. Those very be confrontational, but shy. <laughs> no, you're, you know. I wouldn't move out in a crowd, but when it's one on one, easy. I would say it's a reasonable question to ask. It is, and I'm very interested to find out why the officer didn't do anything. Hopefully we're staying within our rights if they have I think it's, I think is, to me it seems perfectly within uh, rights to do this. You see people holding signs. Well, not only that, but even on the sidewalk. We're allowed on the sidewalk. You know what I mean? The tents and everything. On the officer that talked to the officer, police wasn't there at the time. So we got about five minutes to come back and which we'll do his route. So the other guy wasn't there, but he told us when the other guy comes out, we can ask him. He really says. But I, I think that we are within our rights and within our limits, so there's nothing he can do, which is why he left the area. And they just wanted to see, have to try and exercise their rights, see what the limits of those were by calling the cops, which was an amiable. 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 My phone rings and rings. Right on. Okay, hello? Yeah, so much for that. Yeah. Victory! I... 
<laughs> well, while I'm here and while we're live, somebody want to tell me why you're here, what you're doing, what, and that sort of thing? Okay, so 2009, um, a senator, Danny Noy, called up on behalf of Central Pacific Bank, called up the FDIC. The Central Pacific Financial Corporation. Yeah, okay, Central Pacific, which is the umbrella of this. This is this falls underneath that. Um, so Danny Noy, the senator of Hawaii, called up um, the FDIC on behalf of Central Pacific saying um, that they should get a bailout, blah, 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 where is it? Um, they initially did not qualify for it. Um, and this is an assumption, but through some string pulling that Dan could do, because he also helped fund the bank and at one time had a bulk of his money in the stocks and the stuff here. So um, I assume that he and others assume that he pulled some strings, even though he denies it. Of course he would. Um, so when they went to go pay back everything that... Well, how much did they get? Oh, they got $135 million in their bailout okay. um, under the TARP program. Um, and then they had some bad loans or bad assets or whatnot. And, uh, and they only were able to pay back um, $74 million. Um, they, I believe, were selling a few more assets, so that number might go up a little bit more. But as of right now, they've lost $61 million of the taxpayers' money that we will never see again. Just through bad paperwork. Through bad paperwork, through bad loans. And we they, they give uh, home, home mortgage kind of loans, and they're involved in a bunch of foreclosures, I understand. Too. Yep. Um, I'm not entirely too sure, but that's kind of what I've been hearing. I have to go do a little bit more research, and maybe that's that. Uh, the target for next Financial Friday. Now, there was also a question about uh, their the compensation of their uh, executives at the same time that they're receiving and losing millions. They're um, also getting paid a lot. Any any numbers? And um, I do have a couple numbers. I know that um, John C. Dean, which is the president and uh, the CEO of Central Pacific Bank, um, walked out with $870,000 in 2011. I know that um, Glenn L. Blackman walked out with fifty or no five hundred and seventy thousand dollars last year. Um, I know I'd have to look at the paperwork, but I mean, yeah, they they're walking out with nearly a million dollars each within one year. That's not including their bonuses. Um, uh, that's just compensation. Yeah, yeah that's just wow. their normal pay, um, and it. The saddest thing is that's the low end of the industry. I mean, these guys are rich compared to us. Right. Yet, you know, they're they're losing all our money, and yet there's bigger banks losing way more money. So than they're this like one. low status guys. Yeah. Low, so there's there's some banks that are losing a tremendous amount more. And, and walking away with bonuses bigger than we could even imagine. You know, I mean, it's absolutely absurd that we are giving these money the, the bailouts to these banks. And yet their CEOs are walking away with billions of dollars as a total sum, you know? I yeah. I mean, it's, it's millions on each one individually. No, this is uh, this is kind of like, uh, when did you guys get here? I mean, you're part of uh, Occupy Honolulu, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. So we, we started here um, yesterday at around 12 o'clock or so. Um, then we camped out overnight, and we've been here ever since. That's great. Yeah, so um, we, we were initially thinking about leaving, um, but then they said that they were going to call the cops on us. <laughs> so we decided to stay and uh, exercise our rights. If they're going to kick us out, we're going to fight back a little bit. And, and I saw the police come and then leave. I don't I don't think they can charge you with it. The police didn't even talk to us. The police came, talked to the security guard, I guess, went, walked around around there and just left. Great. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to like pan around so we can get a idea of where we are. <laughs> More people join us. Has it been five minutes yet? It has been five minutes. Let's go and see if uh, we're going to see the, talk to the security guy that called the uh, police and see what the police said. No, it doesn't seem to be that. We'll keep an eye on that school. We'll keep an eye. Yeah, I don't... I'll just follow you.
You just join us. We're at Central Pacific Plaza where there's a uh, pop-up encampment of uh, the Occupy Honolulu set up yesterday, Financial Fridays, in front of uh, that Central Pacific Plaza, which is uh, part of the uh, Central Pacific Financial um, that received uh, 135 million in uh, TARP funds and uh, lost uh, 61 million of that while uh, overcompensating their executives and foreclosing on homeowners. So that really sucks. Of course, it's a Saturday. You wouldn't expect a lot of traffic, but there is yet. So, um, although this is the financial district of uh, Honolulu, it's also between a lot of stuff um, in downtown Honolulu. So there's a lot of uh, traffic. A lot of people or the uh, see the signs. I think people can stay here, look that way, so no high drama, no arrest. The police came and the police left. I believe uh, the encampment is completely within its rights. There's no um, storage of property for more than 24 hours. There's no Bill 54 tags and anything. Uh, there's a bunch of signs uh, that people have been picking up. See, that's a classic one. If you're like, Says if you remember all. the game Monopoly. <laughs> Says it all right there. Doesn't need any words right there. The shrug shoulders say it all. It looks like a banker with like empty pockets. They're saying, well, it's just doing my job or something. <laughs> if you have to have words, but did I do that? Did I owe that? Did I borrow that? <laughs> what $61 million? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm going to sign out for the moment. If something uh, interesting happens, I will cut back in. I wanted to get some interviews with uh, some of the other people here. But uh, they've gone on uh, hydration or dehydration uh, break. I want to show you where we are. Central Pacific Plaza, where there is currently a pop-up encampment of the Occupy Honolulu. We're looking at Alakea Street. Hard to tell where private property begins and ends. Here's a sign that uh, no loitering, skateboarding, rollerblading, roller skating, scooter riding, bicycle riding. So you can actually um, bring your pogo stick here, unicycles, um, that sort of thing, I'm guessing. Also, don't know where private property begins and ends and where public property begins and ends. And that ambiguity is kind of a key point in a lot of uh, First Amendment issues. Well, we'll leave you now. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Uh, if the police come back, I'm sure gonna... I'm sure gonna get back to you. So follow H. Doug and the hashtag O-H-N-L, Occupy Honolulu, actually D, Occupy Honolulu. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for joining us. Bye. You can tell them. Or you can tell okay, them we're, them. we're back kind of uh, briefly. We just talked to the uh, 
We just talked to the security guard uh -huh. who didn't want to be interviewed uh, on a recording device, and since that was on private property, I'm okay. Plus, he was very cool about it, and he said that what they had heard was if the, you know, if you were here for 24-hour period, that that constituted some kind of uh, violation. Um, violation of the law. So after 24 hours, 1 p.m., uh, he called the police. The police came, but. The police said, since you are on public property, that they can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you can. But they weren't even calling. They were just following the orders that they were given, right. which was the call after 24 hours. Right. And the police told them, even then, as long as we are on the sidewalk on right. their property, they can't remove us. They can't right. do anything to us. I fucking love public property. <laughs> Unless you store stuff on it. Unless yeah. you store stuff Which on we it. are not stored. But we're not, we're not stored. stored. We're not stored. But let, let them come and tag us on Saturday. Come on. We <laughs> yeah, still got until Sunday to move it. Come and tag us today. <laughs> so anyway, you have heard it. We are we are not breaking any laws. Um, we are in full compliance with the statute and ordinances of Hawaii in the city of Honolulu. So there. And now I'm leaving. And I and I might rotate out some property from public property so it is not stored. Hell yeah. <laughs>